So next we're gonna create a studio and the studio is gonna be the main comp. So we're not gonna put it in a pre-comps folder. So let's select this main 01 comps. And in here, we're gonna create a new composition. Again, either press Control N or click on this icon. And in here, we're gonna call this one ball animation. That's where the ball is gonna animate. We're gonna set the preset to this right here, HDTV 1080 29.97, which gives us width at 1920, height at 1080, then frame rate at 29.97, and then duration, I'm gonna keep it at three seconds. So that's my setup. You can change it if you want. I'm gonna press okay, and now it creates a new composition right here. So now we need to bring in our ball. And to do that, it's very simple. Just select it and drag it in. So now we have it in here. Obviously it's a little too big, so we're gonna select this, press S to reveal the scale property, and we can adjust the size of it. So let's take it down to something like 60%. So then I'm gonna move it right about here. So I'm gonna position it maybe right here. Okay, that's good. Next, I'm gonna select the same layer we just brought, Control D and duplicate this. So the duplicate we're gonna select and we're gonna rename it to something like Ball Shadow because this will be our shadow. Now, obviously we see it right here. What I wanna do, I wanna make sure snapping right here is checked. So once you have that checked, we can easily grab this shadow and kind of snap it to the bottom right here, bottom center corner, which is good. So that's gonna be our shadow. Obviously we have to do a lot of work through it. So we're gonna adjust scale. Now I want for the width scale to be 60, but for the height, I want it to be 60 divided by 10, which is six, but you can do it in here. You can say divide by 10 and then we'll give you six. Okay, so that's gonna be my shadow right now, but we're not done yet. Obviously it doesn't look like a shadow just yet. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna apply an effect called drop shadow. We've all heard it. So just select this, go to effects and presets and let's search for drop shadow, this one right here. So now we have it right here. I'm gonna drag it and apply it like this. So next we're gonna play with these settings in here. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna say shadow only. I'm gonna make sure that's checked. So what it does, it converts my composition into shadow only. So we don't see the color, it's just a shadow and that color. So we can adjust the opacity. We can say, we want it to be like a subtle. So maybe 15%. It's a very subtle shadow right here. So then we can adjust, obviously this doesn't work that much unless you adjust the distance. So the distance what will sell this effect even more. So we're gonna set it to something like 250. So now when you move on this, you can see that comes in very handy. We're gonna use it and abuse it for sure. So we're gonna set this direction to zero because right now the ball is hitting from the top. So that's something like that seems appropriate. Now, right now, if I zoom in right here, you can see it's pretty sharp. So I'm gonna add a little feathering. So we're gonna to go to softness here. We can alter this, we can go crazy, but I'm gonna keep it at 150. All right, so that's the shadow setup. Obviously we can do more and we'll do a lot more in uh, upcoming videos, but let's do a few more things here. I'm gonna select this layer right here, the main ball, and I'm gonna press Y to get the anchor tool. You can also go over here to the icons if you're more icon oriented. So you can click on this icon to, to get the same thing, but I, I do like using keyboard shortcuts, so Y will get the same thing. And then when you have snapping selected, you can grab this anchor point and you can position it anywhere. In our case, we're gonna position it right below right here. So it's all on the same, you know, in the same area as the shadow. So they're all in the same area. And then what I like to do, I like to create null layer so I can kind of attach both the ball and the shadow to the null layer that I can just move the null layer and everything works well, right? So in this case, instead of doing right click, new, and then null object, I like to use shape layers. I just love shape layers. They make sense to me. So that's just my own preference. So when you click on shape layer, here's what happens. It creates a new shape layer that is blank. You can see no contents. So essentially all that it does, it creates a new blank point, which is perfect for something like a null object. And uh, when you render it, you will not see it. So it doesn't have anything other than just a point that you can use uh, for your own good. You know, obviously we're gonna use it for like a null layer. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select this and we're gonna call this controls. Now we have this, but I do wanna position it right here at the bottom as well. So again, make sure snapping is checked. We're gonna select this point and we're gonna position it right here. So everything has kind of the same point. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select both of these and parent it to controls like that. So now when I move the control, everything moves with it. So this is the null where we're gonna put all of our properties like this stretchy and uh, things of that nature, like a light direction. We're gonna build up on that in the future videos. So 
After this, I'm going to select all of these. So we're going to make it orange. Okay, so now we need to create some kind of background because right now it's transparent. So we need to create like a studio type environment. And for that, we're going to create a new shape layer. So double click on this rectangle tool, which will create a new shape layer. Now you can click on it and change the color of it to something that's not exactly white, maybe like 95 right here. Okay, not exactly white. Then press OK. So we're going to call this one something like BG color. Okay, we're going to put it right underneath everything. So that's going to be the color, but I'm going to add a little vignette to this as well. There's an effect called vignette. And there it is. So I can apply it right on top of my color here. So that's nice. But we can also alter this amount. You can make it really hard here or very soft. So I'm going to keep it at 75, just a subtle vignette. It's starting to look like a studio. So that's good. But we're not done yet. So we're going to create another shape layer. Double click here. And this one's going to be background shadow. So I'm going to call it BG shadow. And for that one, I'm going to change the color of it. So select this. And we're going to take it darker to something like 75. Okay. So we have a darker object. Obviously, it covers everything we just created. So what I want to do with this one, I'm going to select this rectangle tool and be sure that you are creating a mask and not creating a shape. So we're going to draw a mask on top of our shape layer. Now, if you have a shape selected and you start drawing, you're just going to create another shape, which is not what we're wanting to achieve here. So we're going to select this mask and then we're going to draw a mask on top of our BG shadow. So it's going to look something like this. So what I'm trying to do, and by the way, let me change the color so you can see it better. Okay. All right. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create like a studio type background to where, you know, we have a studio, then it kind of bends here and it goes, you know, it comes towards us. And when the bending happens, usually there's a little shadow. So that's what I'm trying to create just to kind of fake the whole studio setup. So we're going to go into this mask and we're going to adjust the Y feather. So we're going to crank up on that, something like 300. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it it does help. So you can see it, it gives it like the sense of depth, which is huge. All right. So we do have background, but from, from the experience, I mean, backgrounds like this, I mean, they're not entirely white. A lot of times when you create like a 3d scene or anything, like we have more lights hitting the surface. It's not just pure white. Usually, you know, maybe one lamp, it's, it's got a little warmth. So it's got like a more of a red color and then the other ones may be more bluish. So you have some different colors hitting it. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to create some kind of a, just a subtle colors to make it more realistic. You don't have to do that, but I like doing that. So we're going to create a new shape layer. Let's double click here. We're going to call this one color. And this one will be an adjustment layer. In other words, whatever we apply on this layer will affect all of these layers underneath. So when we create an effect, it will apply it to everything else as well. And in this case, we're going to select this. We're going to go back to effects and presets panel. And we're going to search for four color gradient, this one right here. So I'm going to drop it right on top of this. And right away, you can see it creates this, which is, you know, not very useful, but we're going to make it super useful. So we're going to add some warm colors over here on the left. Actually, let's do blue colors. So, so something cold, like blue color. And then on the right, we're going to do warm, something like pink, or red. So yellow, let's change that to something like bright blue. That's good. Pink, let's change it to, let's go more darker blue, something like that. So we have a little gradient going on here. And then for this green, we're going to change it to a warmer color, like a pink, hot pink. All right. And then for this one, we're going to take it to more purple like that. Now, obviously, we want to blend them a bit more and you can do that with here blend. So let's see what happens when we kind of crank on that. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. So we're going to take it all the way to something like 1000. So as you can see, it gives us like a blue on one side and then like something warm red on the other side, which is perfect. And then we also have this blending mode option in here. So we're going to set it to something like soft light. In this case, it's going to work well. Now, I think it's too much, but you can see what I'm trying to do here, like a more of a warm color on one side, cool color on the other. But we're going to try to do subtle, so like maybe 30%. It doesn't look like it did much, but if you turn it off, you can see big difference. Like that looks like something came out of a 3D before you did any kind of compositing. And then when you add color, 
It just looks more real, to me at least. Now, you might disagree. All right, well, that's really it. But we're going to do a few more things. Let's do a few more. There's, there's always something more we can do. Uh, I'm going to shy this layer, just hit this. And then also that one, and that one as well. And then we're going to do this. We're going to lock both of them. I don't want to touch them anymore. And that one as well. So because we have these shy check, checked, whatever, then we can click on this hide all, whatever it's called. When you click on it, it will hide them all. So it will clean up your area. And now because we locked them, we can't really grab the background. So we can just work with the ball. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, so far, as you can see, we created the environment, we created the ball. In the next video, we're going to talk about the shadow and the light. We're going to rig this in a sense to where when we grab this ball, the shadow will kind of scale up. And also, you know, when you move it to the side, it will go with it. We'll rig it up to where when you move the light, the shadow will move with it. So all that fun stuff we're going to do in the next video using some basic expressions. So I'll see you there.